The campaign for PR is being pushed by Labour for a New Democracy, an umbrella organisation that includes right-wing Labour think tanks and pro-Remain organisations that helped push Labour towards defeat in 2019. According to Labour for a New Democracy, First Past the Post puts the emphasis of campaigning on swing voters rather than neglected voters. We must be clear, the electoral system didn't cause Labour to lose in 2017 or in 2019. It was the right-wing saboteurs in the Parliamentary Labour Party who undermined the leadership and the movement for a Labour government at every opportunity. The prominent involvement of these pro-EU pressure groups reveals their true intentions. To form a cross-party alliance in Parliament, one that will serve the interests of big business better than the Tories. The ruling class strategists are preparing the ground for Labour to enter a coalition government. In the national interest, of course. PR would in fact increase the strength of the Liberal Democrats in any such coalition. This in turn would increase the pressure on Labour to toe the line of the establishment. This implies the only way to beat the Tories is through some sort of coalition government of parties to the left of the Conservatives. But in reality, this means seeking an alliance with parties to the right of Labour, most notably the Liberal Democrats, a party that has proven its readiness to save the establishment when required. Britain is experiencing its worst crisis for 300 years. Over 150,000 have died, mostly as a result of the Tories prioritising profit over life. Millions have been thrust into poverty and the billionaires have got even richer. In these conditions, Labour should be dominating the Tories in the opinion polls. To reverse Labour's electoral fortunes, it must end its class collaboration and take the fight to the establishment. This requires an inspiring socialist programme that breaks with the status quo and solves the problems faced by millions of workers. This means nationalisation of the commanding heights of the economy under workers' control and the planning of production for need, not tweaking the electoral system. But the logic of PR runs counter to this task. Instead of promoting independent working class politics, PR is a recipe for further class collaboration with parties to the right of Labour. When it comes to the crunch, parties such as the Lib Dems would never agree to form a government that goes against the interests of the establishment. The working class makes up the overwhelming majority of the population. Labour has the potential to get a landslide under any voting system, but it can only do so if it has a bold socialist programme based on radical class demands. This was how Labour won in 1945, not by fiddling with democratic forms, but by making bold political demands that transformed workers' lives. We must therefore steer clear of the trap of electoral reform. Instead, the left must take up the fight to transform the Labour Party from top to bottom, starting by clearing out the agents of big business in the PLP. This means campaigning for open selection, workers' MPs on workers' wages, and a radical socialist programme.